Just coming up to 9.31 on News Talk Breakfast with Chris Dunne and Ivan Yates, we're now going to preview a play uh, called Lippy, which runs tonight, um, to Saturday night, in Lear Theatre in Pierce Street as part of the Dublin Fringe Festival. It's a real pleasure to welcome to the studio Mark O'Halloran, who co-wrote it. And you'll know Mark from uh, Adam and Paul. Remember that film about the junkies in Dublin? Really, really vivid, crude. Uh, and Garage, of course, that uh, great film with, with Pat Short in it. Well, <clears throat> this particular play, Lippy, relates to a story in Leakslip in the year 2000. It was an unimaginable, an unimaginable tragedy that struck the town. An 83-year-old woman made a suicide pact with her three nieces. They barricaded themselves into their home, never to emerge again, starving themselves to death. 13 years later, an experimental theatre maker and playwright have come together to bring it on stage with the help of Mark O'Halloran, who joins us now. You're most welcome, Mark. Thank you very much. Tell us, tell us the story of Lippy. Well, Lippy's the story of uh, a kind of unimaginable and uh, unfathomable tragedy. This, this, these four women who were aged between the ages of about 50 to uh, mid 80s decided that their place in the world wasn't uh, tenable anymore and they barricaded themselves into this house in Leak Slip and they starved themselves to death and not only that but they planned it absolutely and utterly meticulously. They destroyed all their personal belongings, they barricaded the house, they sealed off all the windows they were in you know they had spent most of their life living in Sandy Mountain as the, the economy began to, to boom they were priced out of that area and they had to move to Leak Slip they were incredibly isolated and they had these religious ideas around the idea of going into the afterlife I mean some of it was, was informed by a sort of extreme take on Catholicism but also with New Ageism was in there as well the idea of starving yourself and they believed that the body was this overcoat that could be cast off and they would go into the spirit realm and um, uh, in in a way, it was a story of of isolation and and these people who found that Ireland couldn't hold them anymore, that it had no place for them, and uh, it was an incredibly lonely story. I mean, when it came out, I think people couldn't, uh, even I still haven't worked in the play, don't understand what exactly brought them to it, and I suppose that's where theatre comes in to try and make sense of something that was so ugly and so so senseless that people would feel so isolated that they made this ultimate sacrifice of themselves. And, and in a case like that, where, where you don't really know, you can't get into the minds of these people, how, how do you write the script then? Well, I mean, the play is very much about that in that it's about saying, look, we weren't there, we didn't see what happened with these women, yet we have to tackle the ideas that were there because it's important to give them some dignity in, in the choices that they made. And, uh, and so uh, the, the they approach that that Bush McCasel, who 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 formulated the play, what he did was he he takes the idea that one of the last trips that the women made was two of the women went to the Stevens Green Shopping Centre and bought things like buckets and mops and all of the the accoutrements that they would need to to survive the journey into death, basically, and uh, and they were caught on CCTV footage and. Uh, Forgive me, why would you need buckets and mops to find the journey into death? Well, they were locking themselves into a room, so just for sanitary reasons, etc. I mean, they, they, it was very extreme. It was planned. It was absolutely planned down to the last detail. So what, what Bush does is he takes the idea of a ventriloquist, or not a ventriloquist, a lip reader being brought in to, to look at the CCTV footage and find out what the women were saying to each other in the CCTV footage. And in a way, it's an image of the idea that a writer would come along now and try and make sense of these women's lives by forcing words into their mouth to try and say, look, this is the truth of what went on. And it plays with that image of what exactly... Do you know what exactly? What right do we have to try and figure out what they were doing, as well as anything else? And uh, and it plays with the idea of of the playwright trying to come along and make sense of the world and put an easy formula on it when there is no easy formula yes, there. Yes, um, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, we, we know how the story ends, but something so tragic, so sad. How do you approach that as as a playwright? Well, as a playwright, my job was to to to, to write a monologue for the end for the last of the women. The last of the women lasted you know, possibly six days longer than the others. Um, and she left the room that they were staying in and moved out to the sort of the back kitchen area. And it's a monologue from moments before her death that she delivers. And it's about trying to figure out what a person... I mean, I suppose you use your own imagination because it's not... I'm not pretending that this, these are the last thoughts of that woman, but I'm trying to make sense of what it would be like, what, you know, 
I try to think sometimes what would I be thinking you know what are the fragments of my life that would come come back up in those moments to try and you know we all try and put order on our lives and give definition to our lives by by forming stories in our heads and I suppose that's what she must have been doing in those last moments so in a way it's trying to bear witness and as well as that it's also false you know we're, we're also saying look these aren't the last words but these could have been the last words you know so it's as you know coincidentally today is World Suicide Day is it, uh, oh, d- 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 does it um, you know in presenting this does it does might it have some impact or impression well, on the ongoing but, national discourse about suicide? Well I hope it would I mean I think female suicide is very very it's not very often talked about so I think in that way it's uh, it's uh, it's interesting to see it in that way it's also you know airing these ideas is a good thing or airing these things that happen is a good thing trying to bury them or trying to to, to try and put them aside doesn't ever help and uh and trying to get to the bottom of what went on in these people's lives. I mean, uh, with me, when I was thinking th- thinking through it and writing it, I suppose I felt a lot of anger towards them. I was going like, why when the world, you know, the world is a difficult place. We, we all go through difficulties in life. But still, there are flowers, there is the landscape. I mean, I mean that's... You're coming at it from an opposite from perspective. From an opposite perspective. And I was going, can't you find some some mm-hmm. hope in the world but for some people they can't and you know I suppose we've got to, to figure out why that would be you know Okay Whereas well, my first time to meet you Mark and I have to talk to you about Garage and Adam and Paul <laughs> um, God help you you're from Ennis I am I, from I, Ennis <laughs> I ran away from there when I was 17 years of age you but I have sense, missed yeah. it's funny we, we always say in Ireland we're asked you know where are you from and we tell them where we were born you know mm. and uh, if you ask an American where they're from they tell you where they're living so, yeah. so but I am from Ennis in fact I was at the, the, the All-Ireland yes, uh, early final on Sunday I was and hopefully be back again I absolutely nearly um, it, it nearly killed me I, I have know to the say ban- the passion in the banner uh, is, yes. is, is, is very strong but Garage is set in, 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 is it from your Ennis background it's, yes it's, I mean Pat Short in a garage. Yes. Um, just, just give us your thought processes that led to the creation of Garage. Well, I very much wanted to write something about possibly about male loneliness. I think that men sometimes, especially rural men, experience Big loneliness. Big issue for farmers. Absolutely. They, they tend to isolate themselves. We're not allowed to talk about our feelings around things. You know, um, the idea that a man would say to his best friend in the pub, I'm feeling desperately lonely. I don't know where I belong in life anymore. They'd be laughed out of it in lots of ways. And so it was trying to write something about a man who was isolated in that way and t- to try and to give him dignity. I mean, uh, Lenny Abramson, who directed it, said we were trying to make, and I think this is true, we're trying to make a very serious movie about almost a very ridiculous person. Like taking the, the, the what would be uh, classically seen as the village idiot and giving him full dignity and making him the centre of, of, the, of the, the film. And writing it especially for Pat Short, who's such an extraordinary talent and understands rural life so so spot on it was an absolute pleasure and seeing him bring it to life was was an extraordinary event I have to say yeah I'm, I'm one of Pat's biggest fans uh, mm. both from the comedy point of view and comedy you, you blend in a quasi comical feel to the to all your work you know for things that are very melancholy and sad that's a particular skill well I think George Bernard Shaw said if you're going to tell the truth you better make him laugh you know and, um, I think that there's some kind of truth in that that's I how also, I get through this show actually. exactly yeah. <laughs> we have to laugh at the national tragedy but uh, I also feel that, that uh, like I grew up watching Laurel and Hardy films and that is for me is the ultimate and they make me feel sad you know watching them the, these two isolated characters dancing away through you know the landscape of the urban landscape or the whatever and uh and so there's elements of uh, of Laurel and Hardy in almost everything I do, especially Adam and Paul. I mean, there's even lines <coughs> from some um, Laurel and Hardy movies in there. Uh, well, well, speaking of lines, let's listen to a line from Adam and Paul. What is it? Is it cramps, is it? Yeah. F***ing cramps. They'll pass. No, they won't. We need to have a choice. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I need to go now. Yeah, well, go then. Where? I don't know, behind something. You can't have a shape behind something. Yeah, well, a toilet then. Oh, where? I don't know, the electric one on the bridge. No, it's fine. Why not? Because I'm afraid of it. 
How do you write something like that, Mark? It's so vivid, so crude, so blunt. You, did you did you follow junkies around? Well, I lived on on uh, Parnell Street at the time, and uh, I had moved from Dublin to go to drama school, and I had never seen heroin addicts before. And I suddenly was in the North Inner City in Dublin in the early nineties, and I saw heroin addicts everywhere. And I, anybody who'd lived in Dublin for any length of time, was able to sort of blocked them out of their minds they were able to step over them on the street whereas I because I was new in the city was going oh my god so I used to take diaries of of things that I'd seen on the street and so th- they built up over a number of years during when I, I was starting my career and all of that and I did spend a lot of time following people around and you know I saw two women fighting over a chalk ice for instance or you know I saw ridiculous things lad, a lad falling over in the middle of O'Connell Street and it took him about three minutes to actually hit the ground like he was moving so slowly and, and those images were burnt into my mind and also I then you Know, would have engaged somewhat with with maybe homeless people and uh, with heroin addicts and the idea homelessness is a full time job that's what they were telling me like the idea of trying to find somewhere to have a shite or find trying to where you're going to get food or and they, they're they moving all the time and trying to find somewhere to sleep and it's always trying to find ways of, of, of negotiating life etc and so I found that incredibly interesting and that's where it came from observation you know OK you've been listening to Mark O'Halloran writer playwright uh, we congratulate you on all your work the latest creation is Lippy uh, starting tonight to Saturday in Lippy Theatre as part of the Dublin Fringe Festival. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, and Lippy uh, runs, as Ivan said, until the 14th. Tickets are really, and and this is the case for a lot of the Fringe stuff, really, really nicely priced as well for this. Uh, It's on our Twitter page, twitter.com at breakfastnt, if you want to have a look. Also, fringefest.com is the Fringe website. Have a look at it there. Check it out if you can. Back in just a moment. If you can. Back in just a moment.